How do we continue to preach the gospel in the midst of persecution? How did the disciples do it? Today, I want to talk about that. Persecution and tribulation will arise in our lives, especially if we go against the crowd. If we speak against the crowd, we're going to be persecuted as Christians. And how do we remain grounded? You know, this is just me telling you of my experience of how I remained grounded when I was out there ministering God's word, being persecuted by the crowd, being cussed at, being spit on, having knives pulled out on us, and you know, all of these things that took place as we were preaching. But if I was out there, you know, promoting an event or you know, doing something else, then I wouldn't have been persecuted. But it seems as if you mention the name of Jesus, persecution is going to arise. And Jesus told us, he says, you know, they hated me. Then guess what? They're going to hate you as well because we bear the name of Jesus. We preach the name of Jesus. So how was it that the disciples were able to continue to preach the gospel after being persecuted? And we hear of their persecution. We hear of them being locked up. We hear of their torture and they continued. And you know what the Bible says? It says that they counted it all joy to be able to suffer for Jesus. How do we get there? Because I know some people who were like, I'm not going to preach the gospel anymore because every time I go out there and minister, I get persecuted. I get laughed at. I get mocked. And I don't want to have to deal with that. So what does the Bible teach us about this? Well, if you have your Bibles, open up with me to the book of Matthew chapter 13, verse 5. And to understand this one, it's in Matthew chapter 13, verse 20. Let's read it. It says, Some seed fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. All right, so what does this mean? Verse 20, it says, But he who received the seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Now, so when we preach this message or when the message is preached to you, you receive the message with joy. You believe it, you accept it, you receive it, and everything's good. But then the Bible says, because there is no root in you, whenever you go out and preach the word, persecution arises, or just being a Christian, just having that title on you as a Christian, and you are being persecuted and going through tribulation because of the name of Jesus, you right away fall back. You right away say, oh, no, I'm not going to do this. See, that's exactly what has happened uh, to those people I was telling you about earlier. They said, I don't want to continue because of persecution or tribulation that arises for doing this. I want everybody to love me. I want everybody, you know, for us to all just hang around and have a good time, you know, and I, you know, I seen, it's funny. I seen a commercial a while back about a Muslim, a, a Jew and a Christian all, you know, sitting together, playing chess together. And the title of this commercial said, why can't we just get along like them? And then I thought to myself, I said, because they're playing chess, but once they talk about you know, biblical things, or they talk about religion, then that's where, you know, they start, you know, that's where the differences begin to come in. And that's when, you know, the hate begins to come in and the fights begin to come in, which it shouldn't be right. We should respect each and everybody's decision on whatever religious choice that they make. Right. I mean, we live our lives as Christians and we tell them what the Bible says and they tell us and that's it. There's no reason to fight. Like I said last time that, you know, we respect everybody's religion. And as long as they respect our religion, then there's not going to be any problems. 
But the issue is that there is problems and people fight and people get angry because of our religion as Christianity. So he, here's the thing, okay? So people hear the word, they receive it with gladness, and then they right away stumble and fall after persecution and tribulation arises because they don't have root in themselves. So this just simply means that the person who received the word, received it with joy, was excited about it, but they didn't spend any time with God. They didn't spend any time in prayer. They didn't spend any time reading the Bible. They didn't spend any time learning God so that whenever they went out and ministered, they had no root. Their roots didn't go deep. And this was how the disciples were able to preach the gospel in, uh, in spite of you know, tribulation or persecution in their lives. This is how they were able to say, I count it all joy going through this for the sake of Jesus, because they loved Jesus. They worshiped Jesus. They learned Jesus. They built their relationship with Jesus. So in their hearts, Jesus is true and I'm not going to back away. I'm going to take this because I know for sure that this is true and how we know for sure that the word of God is true, that Jesus is true is when we study the word of God, our roots need to go deep. This is what this text is talking about. So if you find yourself being afraid to go minister God's word because you may be persecuted, being afraid to go out there and tell people about Jesus because of what they may say about you, you know what that means? It just means that you need to go deep. You need to pray more. You need to read the Bible more. So that way, whenever persecution comes and it will come, eventually it will come, you will stand strong and you will not fall away. God bless.